Okay, more refined painting. It's not a, a bad idea to just look at it a little bit. Testing. Can you guys hear me now? Got you now. Yes. I have no idea what's going on with the mic, but so it's not bad to to use some time when you're not painting to kind of look at it as a whole and squint and see if there are areas and shapes that need more highlights or need more emphasis. You kind of strategize that the places you will focus on. And then you always want to use as big a brush as you can. So you don't get stuck in little details. It will kind of paralyze your progress. But as you ref do the refined painting, you know, it's not just a lot of uh, what's often called noodling or scumbling, like lots of tiny little brush strokes just everywhere, kind of without any purpose. It's best to, to be intentional about what you put down and why. And then digital art gives you this wonderful option of you're able to put something down and try it, and then just hit Command Z if you want to take it back or adjust it slightly. And then we can always just scrape back with the eraser as well. And usually I always have my eraser set at 100%, but sometimes you can use the eraser as a blending tool by just taking down at a lower opacity and letting it blend. Professor, even though we cover up a color with another color, does yeah. that mean those pixels change or do those pixels still remain underneath? So they would, those pixels would change if you're covering it up in the same layer. So if I turn off my other painting layers, because all a layer is, is a flat grid of pixels. So in the refined painting layer I'm working on right now, which is a copy of my other one, I am working on this at 100%. This is where I kind of bolded some of the shadows. And so when I paint over this blue with something else, let's say with this kind of green, it's painting it. Oh, I didn't choose the green. Let me try that again. Remember the uh, color selection doesn't work with the eraser. So when I paint over this blue, it changes those pixels. Those blue pixels are no longer there except in the history. So if I erase back now from that same layer, I'm not going to get back to those blue pixels. I'm going to get to the, the empty gray behind. So that's why I find it helpful to not just paint all on one layer, but to build up a base painting layer and then refined painting layers on top of that. So I start with a base color and then I have my sketches and then I have my ref, um, rough kind of base paint that's done all at 100% opacity with a, with a big brush. And then I put my refined paint on top of that. 
Come on. And then, as I'm now doing, I made a copy of that refined paint layer so that I, I could bold it a little bit because I, I had it at down at like 70%. I think, I think it still is because my brush was only at a low opacity. And by duplicating it, it strengthened it. And now I'm working at 100% on this layer. And that allows me to use the paint underneath as well. So you can think of creating a new paint layer as letting a layer of paint dry before putting more paint over the top of it. But while I'm working the paint within the layer, it's, it's wet paint. And if I move it around, it changes the pixels around it. So, so far I've just been doing direct application with the brush. Another tool that some students find really helpful is the smudge tool. And what's nice about the smudge tool, which I haven't gotten to introduce this semester so much because we usually use it on the cloud, the cloud creature project, which was made into an optional project during our freeze, right? And so some of you have maybe played with it, some of you haven't. But what the smudge tool does is it softens as it pulls from existing pixels. So let's find the smudge tool. It might be like hitting your mic or something because every time it goes out it yeah. sounds like the mic is being hit and then it goes out for a few seconds and then it comes back what i think i might be doing is covering it up that might be it too because i have no idea where my mic is on my computer i've been looking for it <laughs> um but you can hear me now clearly so i'll try yeah. to keep my hands where they are but I also have another mic I can plug in when that happens. I don't know why today it's such an issue. So I'm going to show you the smudge tool, which you will find above the dodge and burn options. It's in the drawer and it looks like a little finger smudging a shadow. And it works like any other brush. So you can choose even a custom brush for it. But it does not create new pixels. Instead, it modifies existing pixels. So if I use the smudge tool, it's going to drag and smear those pixels together. So it's a really good way for blending. And it's very strong. It's kind of like dodge and burn. So I'll usually use it at lower than 30%. And you want to be careful of overusing it, just like blurring. Because it's harder to get um, hard edges back than it is to soften edges. But if I want to smudge this highlight, I want to smudge this shadow, which seems a little harsh, and blend it with some of the, the paint around it, especially at the edge. The smudge tool can be very helpful. And there are some digital artists that just use it, in my opinion, way too much, but it can be part of, a, of an aesthetic. It's more airbrushy. I guess what I might recommend is you can make a duplicate, play with the smudge tool, and then you can kind of blend that into your paint and see what you think. But that's a way of altering your pixels that many find helpful. Yeah, I think it's pretty good to there. So, so far, the only tools we've really used are the eyedropper to select colors, the paintbrush tool, the eraser, and now the smudge tool.
So I'm trying to be really deliberate with some shapes. Some particular highlights just to define the form. And every time I put down a new stroke, that adds memory. So do save your work as you go. I'm saving each time a video needs to be processed. So sometimes once you've put in a highlight or once you've smudged, you have to go back in. more important is the value. So here I'm going to try to put something in and then I'm going to use my eraser. I'm going to use the shortcut just holding down E. It brings me to my eraser tool and I'm, it's only at 41%. So I can kind of dim that now and treat the edges of that. And it lets the paint layers underneath show through. And I'm seeing it in my navigator as well. And then it's at this point when I've got kind of the arrangement of the facial features set that I can be pretty critical of them and say, yeah, it looks like a face, but it doesn't quite look like her face. And that's where digital can be really helpful. And I will show you how. Because I'm going to merge these layers now. These existing pieces. And then import them and, and warp them and everything. Uh, kind of pull the paint. In fact, I want you to think of everything I painted as being a sheet of acrylic that now I can merge together and then I can kind of stretch like it's rolled dough. Because her nose is maybe a little bit longer than I made it. Her jaw is a little bit shorter. 